Okay, so the way my teacher taught me is how staccato, how reread that. You kind of say a little word in your mouth if that makes a little bit of sense. So say for example, you're playing a D, a middle D, and you see this little dot in there and you'll be like, oh my God, what does that mean? It's a staccato, it just means to play that note short, but make sure to not back off on that note as well. You wanna make sure it's strong and it's confident. You wanna kinda of say dit in your mouth, so dit. You see how it's short, but it's not backed off. It's not dit, dit, dit. It's dit, dit. There's a difference between, you know, backing off your note because it can make the difference in the world, you know. The articulation is there for a reason, so they want you to emphasize that articulation, but not too much to the point where you're where you're playing a different articulation, if that makes sense. Now, legato is the complete opposite of staccato. So legato, you wanna play very beautifully and very long. So the way my teacher taught me as well is you kind of say da, 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 da in your mouth while you're playing, if that makes sense. It gets a little tricky once like you're actually playing and then you're trying, to, you're trying to say a word in your mouth, but trust me, it's not what I mean and you'll understand once you start practicing. But the legato, basically, you want very full and very beautiful and very elongated. Once you see that, for example, like the two half notes, anything connected, two notes connected, you want to make sure that you don't re-articulate that second note like a staccato, like da, 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 da. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure as well that it's elongated, but also you want to emphasize that second note, but not to the point where you can notice it. So this is what you don't want to do. You want to make sure that it's elongated, beautiful, and the, the notes are connected, not separated. You see the difference? The first one, you kind of like emphasize it, you da da da. And the second phrase, how you're supposed to play legato, would be like da da da. You want to make sure that they're all connected and not separated. Okay, so the next thing we're going to move on to would be runs. Now, I, I know a lot of you young musicians probably won't see a lot of runs in any of the music you play. You might, you might do a little bit of chord of notes, a little bit of eighth notes, but trust me, they will help you as soon as you start learning them. So runs can be really tricky and scary, especially if you're not very comfortable with all your notes, all your fingerings on your instrument. So you want to make sure that you are very comfortable with all the notes on your instrument or all the notes that you need for this run. So for example, if you were just playing a run maybe to your D, to your G, or to your A, something simple like that, you know, just G, D, E, F, sharp, G, A something similar to that, it could be really easy because it's just up the scale. But something, you know, different, it could be, you could go from your G and then straight up to your D and then up to the high A. Like that can be a little bit trickier, especially switching up octaves. But one thing you really wanna do if you are um, practicing runs, you see a run in your music, when you go home, you wanna take it slow. You always wanna take it slow because even if you are somewhat comfortable with your run and you can play it a little bit, you know, a little bit iffy, but you know, it sounds okay. You wanna make sure that all your, in your run, all of your notes are clear because the difference between an unclear run and a clear run can be, can change tremendously. Now I know some of the notes, like you can skip one, but it'll still sound okay. Trust me, you wanna hit all of your notes because it'll sound so much prettier and so much more clean. Now, like I said before, say for example, if a piece is at 115 and there's a run in there, you wanna make sure you take it like 85 and then 90, 95, 100, and do a couple of reps at each of those tempos. And that way you'll get you know, more comfortable and more comfortable with that. And trust me, it'll help you out in the long run because as soon as you get to high school or even to middle school, you'll get those fast runs. And because you practice this beforehand, you'll get a lot more comfortable and you won't be as scared of them anymore. All right, guys, you made it to the end of the video. I hope any of this information or advice helped you guys a little bit out on how to play on the saxophone. And I wish you all well on your journey on playing the best instrument in the world.